not a hello kiss. That is a what do you think happened to me today, and when you hear it, you're going to go, wee kiss. <laughs> what happened? Oh, nothing much. Well, what? What prominent comedy television writer, whose wife is currently holding a dripping spoon, <laughs> was offered a job today at twice the money he is now making? Wee! <laughs> With a staff of five writers, Wee! With my own private secretary. <laughs> and the most exciting part of all, I turned it down. You what? Yep. Why? Because, honey, if I took that job in about three months, this gorgeous hunk of man that you call your loving husband would be reduced to a doddering, nervous old man. <laughs> they offered you the Dan Howard show? Right. Oh, thank goodness you turned it down. I'm proud of you, darling. I'm proud of me, too. It's not every day a guy gets offered that kind of money and position. I'm proud because you turned it down. You sure, honey? You better think that over. That's a lot of money. You sure you want me poor and... Happy like this, or you want me rich and old like that? I want you just the way you are. I take it over, honey. Give it some thought. That's an awful lot of money, honey. Well, stop that. Let me put it this way. I have a happy, semi-well-adjusted husband who comes home and greets me with a smile and a kiss. And I'd rather have that than all the money in the world. Yeah? Yeah. So how about a smile? And a kiss? <laughs> That's what I want. Hey. I didn't realize there was such a great smiler and kisser. <laughs> <laughs> no, honey, I couldn't work for a guy like Dan Howard. Although, you know, they asked me to recommend somebody. Did you? No, who could I recommend? I don't hate anybody that much. <laughs> you know, a writer would have to be out of his mind to go to work for Dan Howard. Yeah. Although there is one possibility. What? We can only find a writer who is already a nervous, doddering old man. Give us a little no, kiss, Rob, honey. Don't oh, do come that. On. Stop it. doddering old man. I wouldn't mind being married to a poor doddering old man. <laughs> but I gotta agree with her about Dan Howard. Boy, anybody take a job with him has got to be out of his mind. Hi. Well, congratulate me. What for? Well, you're looking at the new head writer of the Dan Howard show. <laughs> Ta-da! You're kidding. Kidding? Would I be kidding about a thing like that? I just came from his office, and everything is all set. All set? S-E-T-Z. -E well, buddy, it's wonderful, I think. Wait a minute. What kind of reaction is that to good news? Wonderful, you think? Well, buddy, it's just that... What? Well, just what? Well... Well, 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 I hope what you're trying to say is that you're going to miss me around here and you hate to see me go and everything. Actually, that, that was the toughest thing about me accepting a new job. You really accepted it? Look, would I kid about something like that? Well, of course we're going to miss you, buddy. I mean, if you go. What do you mean, if I go? Why shouldn't I take the job? Well, you know about Dan Howard and Dan the writers. Howard, Dan Howard. Look, you're talking to Buddy Sorrell. I've been around a long time. I, I can handle Dan. Buddy, are you sure you want to handle him? What's that supposed to mean? Boy, you might be making a mistake, Buddy. Mistake? Is it a mistake to want more money? Be truthful, Rob. If you were offered the head writing job on the Dan Howard show at twice the money, would you turn it down? Buddy, I was, and I did. 
Sí. Yeah. <laughs> you did? Honest, buddy. Rod turned down the same job. Oh. Why'd you turn it down? Because I don't want to work for Dan Howard. Well, I do. And if you're my friend, you're gonna help me out right now. I got a problem. Well, you know I'm your friend. All right, you gotta help me break my contract here so I can accept the other job. Buddy, you really feel that strongly about it? I sure do. I've given it a lot of thought. This is what I want. Well, if this is what you want, buddy, you're sure gonna miss you around here, you big nut. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna miss you guys, too. Buddy, I sure hate to lose you. Are you sure you don't want to think it over a little while? No, no, I told you. I thought it over. Okay. Marge, would you ask Mel to step in here a minute? Gee, thanks, Rob. Tell you one thing, boy, you're going to make two people very happy. Two people? Yeah. Me and that big hairy ape. <laughs> You want to see me, Rob? Yeah, Mel, there's something we need your help on. Yes? It concerns Buddy here. The only thing I'll help him with is his resignation. Good, good, good. That's exactly what we want to talk to you about. Now, just come on, sit down here, make yourself nice and comfy. And... Right down here, sir. <laughs> now, what's this all about? Mel, Buddy would like his release. He wants to leave? Understand? I want to look. Look, I'm going. Watch me. Look, look. I'm bye. I'm going. <laughs> Mel, Buddy has an offer of a better job and a chance to be a head writer. To be rid of him, to be able to walk into this office without the fear of being verbally assaulted. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> then it's all right. No. <laughs> no. 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 But you just said... Never was... mind what I just said. The answer is no. And for him, I'll spell it N-O. <laughs> why? For one very good reason. Our star, Alan Brady, happens to think he's the best one-line joke writer in the business. Look, Mel, I don't ask you for many things. And I appreciate that, Rob. But you must remember that this is a business. A glamorous business, yes, but still a business. Now, as long as he does his job, he'll remain. I don't want him, but our star, Alan Brady, does. So he'll stay until Alan discovers, as I did, that it's possible to hire talented writers who are not insufferable bores. Any other questions? Yeah. Where can I buy a bald-headed voodoo doll? <laughs> Nothing would make me happier than to fire him. How do you like that guy? The one big chance in my life, and that idiot has to go ruin it. Well, it's just like my mother always says. The sun isn't always shining just because there are sparrows. <laughs> supposed to mean? I don't know, but ain't it pretty? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, buddy. We did our best. No, you didn't. Buddy, you heard me ask Mel for your release. And you heard Mel say that you were too good to lose. Yeah, and I also heard Mel say that if I wasn't doing my job and if he got an okay from Alan Brady, he could fire me. So? So, write a letter to Alan Brady. Tell him I'm a, a no-talent bum. But that's not so. So lie a little. Buddy, I am not gonna lie But you're you. supposed to be my friend. I am your friend. Then 
exaggerate a little. There must be something wrong with me. No, buddy, it is not right. And besides, that Mel is not going to fall for it. I might. <laughs> <laughs> Mel Cooley, you were listening at that door. And I heard every word. Look, I'll level with you. If Alan wants to let him go, then I'm off the hook. Shall we get to the memo? Good. I'll type. You dictate. You know all those college words. Oh, all right. Yeah, I think you're a big mistake. Well, I'll set for you right there. Okay, now talk slow. All right. Memo to Mel Cooley with a carbon copy to Alan Brady. Dear Mel. There is a situation concerning the writing staff which I believe merits your attention. Wait a minute, you're too polite. That, you, you gotta louse me up more. Yes, what you need is some good, honest hatred. I'll dictate it. <laughs> During the past season, Buddy Sorrell has not contributed one idea, joke, or fresh thought. Beautiful. Hey, Sal, tell him about how I lay, you know, sleep on the couch all day there, and I'm always coming in late and everything, you know. He has been distracting Sally Rogers and myself, and what was once a serviceable talent has deteriorated into an office clown. Wonderful. Curly, if I ever want to get sent to the chair, you're going to be my lawyer. <laughs> There is only one course of action, total and complete release from the show, yours very truly, Robert Petrie. Uh, boy, that ought to do it. I certainly hope so. Yeah. Well, Rob, sign it. C come on, Rob. Right here. Buddy, I don't feel right about this. I don't either. C c come on, H here's a pen, nothing to it. Just uh, Robert Petrie, that's all. There it is, my own little declaration of independence. Thomas Jefferson, I thank you. <laughs> You're more like Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Buddy, I cherish this moment. Never in my entire life have I been happier to say goodbye to anyone. Goodbye forever. Mel and me. Many years of our association, I know I've said a lot of unkind things about your bald head. And I'm sorry I didn't mention the rest of your ugly puss. <laughs> One last yuck. <laughs> The more I think about it, the more I'm convinced you shouldn't have sent that memo. Honey, for the tenth time, it's what Buddy wanted. Well, wanted or not, you shouldn't have signed it. It got him his release, and that's all he cared about. Well, there must have been some other way. Lori, will you please relax? It's my day off, and I don't want to think about it. Hey, honey, what do you want me to write here? A note to Richie's kindergarten teacher telling her that you will talk to him about his behavior. What did he do? He ate his paste. <laughs> I'll get it. Just taking a little ride and thought I'd drop by and say hello. Hey, I'm not interrupting anything, am I? No, as a matter of fact, we were just talking about you. Oh, uh, about my new job? Yeah. Well, you can forget it. I didn't get the job. You didn't get the job? No. I haven't told anybody about it. I didn't even tell my wife. Buddy, I thought it was all set. 
Yeah, it was all said except for one little thing, a reference. Oh, well, I'll give you a reference. You already gave me one. <laughs> what do you mean? Dan Howard wanted to check on me, you know, get a reference, so he called his best friend. Well, who's there? Alan Brady. And Alan read him the memo. <sighs> Looks like I'm finished. Oh, buddy, it can't be that bad. You kidding? And Dan Howard's got it spread all over town by now. That Mel Cooley right now is probably the happiest bald-headed producer in television. <laughs> Rob, could you talk to Mel and explain it? Only Mel was there. He helped write the memo. That's not Rob's fault. That's my own fault, the whole thing. Mel is sitting there probably clapping his hands together. <laughs> I think this whole affair is just shameful. Honey, it wasn't supposed to turn out this way. It was supposed to be the opposite. Buddy should be happy now. Oh, well, look, I didn't come up here to depress anybody. I just want to know, uh, how do you spell unemployment? <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, you want me to talk to Mel about getting your job back? Hey, you think you could? Yeah. I'll talk to him Monday and see what I can do. Good. Hey, uh, you know, that's, that's real nice of you, Rob. Listen, I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for me. I happen to think we need you down at that office. I'm glad Dan Howard didn't get you. <laughs> Whether you mean it or not, sure sounds good. Hey, hey, you let me know if you hear anything, huh? Yeah, I'll call. Bye, hey. So long, Laura. Bye, buddy. Bye, buddy. You must really be upset. I've never seen Buddy so depressed. Well, getting fired's pretty depressing. Honey, what do you want me to write down here? A note to Richie's teacher. About the paste. Oh. Honey, you better write it. <laughs> if I sign it, I'm liable to get him kicked out of kindergarten. <laughs> you're thinking. What are you thinking? I'm thinking we came up with that script too soon and uh, too good. And too easy. Yeah. All right, let's show them how tough it is to work without Buddy. Come on, let's panic around here. There's a little panic around the office here. Oh, Make it look hard. Oh, man, man. Yeah. how about that? Uh -huh. Take off your tie, open your collar. Yeah, That's I'll it. Oh, boy, I sure like you. This is fun. Hi, Bill. Oh, hello, Mel. Hey, what are you two, writers or litter bugs? Well, we're hard at work. What, what's that, next week's script? Yes, uh, Mel, we had a little <laughs> trouble getting started with it. Yeah, but we're doing fine now, Mel. We're up to page four. Page four? Last Friday, you were on page ten. I know, Mel, but we had to throw all of that stuff out. Now, there's only two of us working here. Yeah, Mel. There's two of us. And it's a big show. You know, it's a three-man job. I see what you're doing. You're asking for a third writer. All right, all right. I'll give you permission to hire one. That shows you how much faith I have in your judgment. Hire whomever you please. Good. But not Buddy. <laughs> well, that fell flat. At least 
gonna clean up this mess. <laughs> you, Sally, who else? Oh, God, if only Buddy hadn't been so nasty. Oh, he couldn't have been nasty if he made a living at it. Make a living at it. Sally, that's it. <laughs> I hire somebody nastier than Buddy. I thought Jack the Ripper was dead. <laughs> Who can be nastier to Mel than Buddy? Mel's wife? <laughs> <laughs> no, somebody who makes a living at it. Who makes a living at insulting people? Nightclub comedians do. They're always bothered by hecklers. They have to have a good supply of insults. Don't you get it? We hire a nightclub comedian, have him come in here and insult Mel. Yeah, but who could we get? I'll bet you Jackie Brewster would do it. Hey, he's a good friend of mine. He'd be great. Is he in town? Sure. Yeah, but would he do it? Sure he'd do it. He's a good friend. Besides, Sal, what have we got to lose? Our, Our jobs. jobs. <laughs> Jackie, we really appreciate you coming down to give us a hand with this. Ah, look, forget it. Buddy, help me get in the business. If I can help him get his job back, wonderful. Yeah, but there's only one thing, Rob. Suppose Mel recognizes him. He might have seen him in a nightclub. <laughs> Don't worry about that, Sally. You know what happens when they introduce me in a nightclub? The guy comes out and says, here's Jackie Brewster. And the whole audience says, who's he? <laughs> I mean, more people know me as who's he than Jackie Brewster. <laughs> we have no problem there at all. I happen to know Mel has never been in a nightclub in his life. Never been in a nightclub. I hate him already. <laughs> well, I don't think we have any problem at all, actually. I don't think Mel's been any place. So how did he get to be a big TV producer? Easy. He married the star's sister. <laughs> <laughs> He's a brother-in-law. <laughs> Gee, Jackie, you're a doll for doing this. I love Buddy's my buddy. He do the same thing for me. Well, fellas... Can we get the show on the road? Okay. Let me make sure I have everything right now. You're going to introduce me as the new writer. Yeah. Right. Then I give him the zinger, right? Right. You just keep insulting him until he yells, buddy. Yeah. Now, look. Don't, don't let up on him, see? Keep killing him with me. Just insults. Go, go. That's right. Put him out of his misery. Yeah, kind of like a mercy killing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You go get the guy who fired the guy. <clears throat> Who was the first guy mm, who knew me? Mm. Gotta get those teeth fixed. Mm. When I was a guy, okay, you go do that. Go get him. Mm. <laughs> hey, you know, gee, I'm a little nervous about this whole thing. I mean, there's usually a stage between me and the audience, and I don't insult people till they insult me first. Well, just remember, it's for a good cause. Yeah, well, he's not the violent type, is he? I mean, I like Buddy, but I wouldn't want to get hit in the head with a typewriter. So. No, he's not the violent type. He's more like, uh, uh, like that. Well, who's he? See, he knows me already. <laughs> Mel, this is our new writer, and I screened a lot of good men before I hired him. Uh, Jackie, this is Mel Cooley, our producer. Mel, this is Jackie Brew Brew. Ooh. Brew Brew. <laughs> brew Brew. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's certainly an unusual name, Mr. Brew Brew. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. My father stuttered. <laughs> I, uh, I don't believe I know your work. What have you done? About what? <laughs> Work. Uh, uh, I, Mr. Brubrew hasn't done too much television writing, Mel. That's right. For the last couple of years, I've been translating the works of Shakespeare into pig Latin. <laughs> Good sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, I like you, my hand. Really? <laughs> Is that your hand? Why, it looks more like five fat worms. <laughs> 
beg your pardon. Why? You can't help it if you have worm fingers. <laughs> Does it run in your family? You know, now, 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 look, Mr. Brew Brew. No, I... no, 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 no. Don't make a mistake. Oh, you couldn't hear what you were saying. You had your tongue in the way of your eye tooth and you couldn't see it. <laughs> Yes, now don't make a mistake. Now just keep talking nice with brown tones. Look, look, do you know who I am? Don't you know who you are? <laughs> Listen, when you find out, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I got a question for you. Come right over here. Come right over here. Listen, do you pluck your scalp? <laughs> It's the first time I ever saw a bongo with glasses. <laughs> Rob, is this a rib? No, no, no. This is an arm. This is a rib. <laughs> you feel the difference? This is an arm. This is a rib. Now I want you to recite after me. Think, think, think. This is an arm. This is a rib. This is an arm. This is a rib. You got it? This is an arm. This is a rib. Yeah, Rob. No, 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 no. Not Rob. Rib. Now listen, you're not listening to me, you're not paying attention. You're gonna flunk, Melvin. As a matter of fact, you look like a flunky. Rob, you don't know what's going on. Going on? Now sit down, I'll tell you. I'm from the FBI. FBI? FBI, that's you. Fat, bald, and ignorant. <laughs> Sign a contract. Well, no, Mel, that's why he's here. Get him out. Get him out. Mel, I need a third writer. Out, out, out. Get me anybody else. Even Buddy? Wait a minute now before you leave. Remember, this is your own. This is your own. This is your own. Can I have the next shot surgery I ever saw in my life. <laughs> I don't know what to do for you. I'd like to kiss you. <laughs> you really want to do something for me, let her kiss me. Oh, huh? oh to a lot of trouble for you. Will you please behave yourself? Please, buddy. No more ball-headed jokes, huh? Why do you want to insult Mel like that anyway? Well, I don't like him. For one thing, he's too tall. <laughs> Rob's just as tall. Yeah, but he's not nasty about it. At least when Rob stands next to me, he slumps a little. <laughs> Good evening, Sally. Hi, Mel. Rob? Well, here's Buddy's contract, signed, sealed, and delivered. Hey, is that it? Is it all official now? Mm -hmm. You mean, well, well, just a minute, Mel, uh, sir. You, you mean uh, uh, I'm back on a job, they can't fire me or nothing? Nope. <laughs> Goldilocks. <laughs> I'm very happy you're wearing that hat, because there's a lot of woodpeckers in town. <laughs> and if I were you, I'd darken the eyebrows a little bit because your face is starting to look like your neck is blowing bubble gum. <laughs> you know that this guy has to carry his dandruff around in his hands? <laughs> it's a wonder when you walk down the street, people don't want to put their finger in your ear and start bowling. <laughs> Baldy jokes and he keeps laughing. Good night, Sally. Rob, your jokes about my sparseness of hair no longer bother me. Good night. <laughs> 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 